all right this should be working now exciting exciting um okay all right is it that amazing okay renee can you help me out here can you tell me if you hear me please um yeah i just had a bit of trouble starting this up okay i'm gonna switch this off and anybody else as well if you can hear me let me know uh, that uh, you can hear me okay awesome Whoo! <laughs> i had a bit of a, a panic, panic. Uh, but uh, yeah just just uh something was wrong the button wasn't there like start the broadcast anyway so uh we've got 41 people online which is which is nice uh, so we're gonna wait a couple of minutes uh to get everybody started um waiting let's do the usual roll call please let me know where you're from and uh of course uh that you can hear me that, that that's everybody can hear me uh so yeah let me know where you're from and uh we'll see who we've got here this time and victor if you can't see anything uh just okay good good okay it just takes a couple of seconds but... sydney rod from sydney hi rod uh, from Belgium, Manuel. I hope I said that right. Uh, Brian from Sydney. Hey, Brian. Brian, nice to see, nice to see you here. Um, Darsh, USA, Philip, Ireland. Whoa, we've got, hold on, hold on. John from Canada, Czech Republic, Martin, USA, Robert, Bill Hengen from uh, Washington, uh, Montreal, Wisconsin, Germany, Rene, yes, uh, <laughs> the, the usual. Usual suspects, uh, Ravi from UK, uh, Rod, you uh, saw Johannesburg. Yes, I was waiting from, for somebody from South Africa. Usually we have a couple of people that from there. Uh, France, Marseille, Knoxville, awesome. Okay, so we've got quite quite a lot of people. We've got 42 people online. And um, yeah, so before we start, I just wanted to let you guys know that we've kind of had uh, a bit of different topics. So first time we talked about the butterfly pattern, second time we talked about stop loss and the growth. So kind of a mix of uh, complexities, I would say. So some simple, like medium topics, like the butterfly was a bit medium or a bit more complex, and then stop loss and profit was a bit simple. Um, so that's how these weapons are going to be structured. They're going to be uh, all over the place in terms of complexity, but they're always going to be fun and knowledgeable. And today we've got a very, very complex topic. Uh, it's called, um, we're going to be talking about aliasing noise and uh, super smoothers and stuff like that. And in fact, uh, a lot of, um, it, it was inspired by this book, Psychoanalytics for Traders. And I'll mention it again inside the course. Very complex book, so I just wanted to show you here. Like, for instance, you can see that that is for trading, right? So you can see all those, like, Fourier transformations and complex mathematical formulas. And, um, yeah, when I was reading this book, <laughs> I was so into it. I was calling the – not calling. I was um, emailing on email with attenuation there. See, like, all these filters, bypass filters, um, Two pole Butterworth filters and things like that. So very exciting, but very complicated book. And uh, but don't worry, today as always, I will um, explain everything in a very um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Um, yeah, back to school, looking at the book. So yeah, I'll explain everything in a very step by step approach, as we usually uh, have in our courses. And so you should be able to gather everything. Okay, so. It's uh, 42 attendees, very, very excited to see everybody here. Hi, Yvonne from Hong Kong. And um, we're going to get started. All right, so the first thing I wanted to show you, something uh, very exciting. I'm going to put in a video snippet. And a lot of you know that Forex Boat went through a um, change of logo. And uh, thank you very much for voting. There were a couple of options that you could have selected from. So if you voted, thank you very much uh, for that. And now I'm going to show you the final result. I'm pretty excited about this. So let's see if this works. I'm going to load up a video right into here. All right, let's have a look. All right, what did you think? 
I thought that was pretty cool. Um, how like how it twists and everything, and um, yeah. So I'm uh, very happy with the new uh, logo, and thank you very much for uh, helping uh, select it. Uh, that logo one with an average rating of 4.2, 4.2, whereas uh, runner up was like 3.5. So uh, there and uh, yeah, we had like over 500 around 500 people vote for the logo. So that was, that was great to see all that support for that. OK, so moving on to our presentation for today, we're going to start off with a presentation. And actually, this webinar might run a bit over an hour. So I hope uh, you're fine with that. Um, but we'll see how we go. I'll try to uh, fit it in. OK, so I'm going to change my video to a screen, but don't worry, I will see you back here after we're done with this part. So I'm just going to find the button here. Screen share, screen two. This is the uh, still, uh, what you call it? Whoop, whoop, that's what happens when you have three screens. All right, so say hi to Elon Musk. And um, off we go, off to the races. OK, so disclaimer. Uh, legally, I have to present you with this disclaimer. So take a, a few seconds to read through it. Um, I would like to say a great, um, a big shout out to Brian, who's sitting here watching from Sydney. He is our compliance um, manager at HLK. And uh, it does a lot of uh, compliance checks for us. So thank you very much, Brian, for helping out with these disclaimers. Appreciate all the work you do. And now we're going to move on to the presentation. So, all right, there's our beautiful new logo for Expo Trading Academy. By the way, if at any point you lose a sound or anything like that, just let me know. I'm still monitoring the chat on one of my other screens. Um, all right, so what do we have here? We've got uh, a plan for today. What are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're going to, number one, talk about aliasing noise theory. So it is going to be quite complex at some points, but I'll, I'll point that out, I'll give you a little bell when it is going to be complex. And this is going to be the main chunky part of this presentation. It's going to take up about maybe like 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Then we're going to talk about the super smoother indicator. I will show it to you in MetaTrader 4 in live action. Then we'll talk about the moving average versus the super smoother. So we'll find out uh, what are the differences. We'll actually compare them side by side. And you will find out the two main reasons why the super smoother um, beats the moving average every day of the year. Then we'll talk about a bonus. So the bonus, I'll reveal it right now. The bonus is the super smoother download. So if you haven't yet got the super smoother, you'll be able to receive uh, the super smoother in this webinar. I'll show you where you can download my interpretation or implementation of the super smoother. And finally, we'll have a Q&A at the end of this session. All good, everybody on board? Perfect. Let's get started. So. First off, let's forget about trading. Let's forget about trading for the next couple of minutes. We're not going to uh, be starting off by looking at charts. We're going to be starting off by looking at other things. And in fact, we're going to be talking about sound waves or just waves, not necessarily sound waves. But here in front of you, you've got an example of wave. And I'm sure all of us have seen these. This is basically. Um, a representation of a sound wave. So if you're playing a song, then something like this might be um, on one of your players or something like that. So it's moving from right to left, and it's uh, showing you um, how the audio is changing through time. So it's a representation of the wave in time. All right, so here's a kind of a simplified version of that. So it's a, a, a simple sine wave. and um, it's just presented here. So we're going to start off by looking at this because the concepts we talk about, in fact, in particular aliasing, you can then scale it onto uh, bigger waves and more complex waves like, like the one we saw just now. But it's easier to discuss these things on a very trivial example like this. So we've got a sine wave here. It's also a presentation of some signal. It can be an audio wave. It doesn't have to be an audio wave. It can be an audio wave. It can be an electrical signal. Um, it can be pretty much any type of uh, signal that you can uh, think of. And these are all, so in this case, we're looking at a continuous signal. As you can see, for any point in time, there is a value on this chart. All right, so what, uh, what can we do here? Let's say 
Um, this arrow, of course, represents the way the signal is moving. So it's moving from right to left, Sim similar kind of to like a forex chart. So think of it as in the forex uh, chart, you know, adds on the right. So the whole chart is moving to left. Same thing here. And uh, let's say we want to sample it. So what does sampling mean? So uh, <laughs> Rene, it looks like a 60 hertz bass line. So perhaps uh, some people might know uh, exactly what this is or what this might be. But nevertheless, so let's say we want to sample it. We know that this is a continuous signal and for every point in time is a value, but that's a lot of information, right? A lot of information to uh, contain and uh, that um, takes up a lot of space, memory and so on. So let's say we want to sample it. Let's say we want to take a value of this sinus um, or sine, <laughs> sine wave, probably the correct word it is. Let's say we want, uh, let's say we want to take a value of the sine wave at a certain sampling rate. So the sampling rate can be once per second or once per every um, you know, millisecond or something like that, or once per day. It doesn't matter what the value is, but nevertheless, so with certain periodicity, we're taking a sample value. And then we're forgetting about the signal. So now we just have this information, these four blue dots. Now the question is, having this information, can we restore the original wave? Why, why are we asking this question? Well, because Let's say one example of why you would want to do that is because by storing four bits of data like this, or four bytes of data like this, instead of the whole wave, you're saving so much space. And imagine if you have like hours and hours and hours of that signal, you're going to spe you're going to compress that information and save a lot of space. That's just one of the examples. There are other reasons why you would want to sample. So, but we're interested with the question: Can we restore this wave? Well, sure we can. So we'll start off by just you know picking, guessing, and trying to pick a wave that will fit the signal or fit fit this uh, sample. So let's say we try this one right here. You can see there's lots. The frequency is much higher, and there's lots of ups and downs, but it doesn't really fit. So you can see here and here, the wave doesn't go through our sample, so it's not the correct representation. It's not the correct wave that we're looking for, and therefore this is a no-go. Um, next is, uh, let's expand this wave. Let's look at a wave with a slightly lesser frequency, right? So uh, here, does this one fit? No, it doesn't fit again. So you've got three points that don't fit this time. And remember, we're looking for that one exact specific match. OK, so now this is a no-go. Let's try a different one. Let's reduce the frequency even more. And here you can see that once again, it doesn't fit. So this is a no-go as well. And so we keep iterating like that. We keep trying different combinations. It's all done programmatically. And finally, you find the correct answer. So there is a wave. That's exactly the one that we started off with. So as you can see, you can restore the original signal based on this sample. But now we have kind of a problem. The question here is, is this the only signal that fits this sample? Well, this one fits, but are there any other ones? Well, the answer is actually no. There are other signals. So the, no, meaning that this isn't the only one that fits. There are other signals that will fit this wave. I'll show you one right now. There you go. So you can see that this wave fits this sample perfectly well as well. All four points are valid. However, so this one is a yes, this is a good uh, uh, fit. But at the same time, you can see that it's not the one we were after. The uh, frequency, for instance, we're not even talking about the amplitude here. Even just the frequency is much, much lower than the original signal. So if I put them uh, together side by side, you will see that even though we have this sample it uh, that we thought represents the red line, it actually rep can represent both the red and the blue line. And maybe there are even more lines that this sample represents. So, and this is called aliasing. Why is it called aliasing? Well, because um, it the signal, the red signal now has an alias, right? So alias is kind of like, uh, you know, when you go in a forum and you have an alias or you, you like, to like, um, communicating online and you you have an alias, so meaning that you don't use your real name, you use some uh, fake name. So same thing here. So the real signal is a red signal. The blue signal is an alias. It's the fake signal that fits this uh, sample as well. The problem is if we only have the sampling um, uh, signal, so only the blue dots, then we don't know which one was the real one, which one was the fake one, which one is the fake one. And this is the problem of aliasing. So. Uh, and that's in signal processing. So where do you see aliasing? Well, aliasing can be seen in lots of lots and lots and lots of different applications, even in real life. So in sound processing, in audio audio technicians all the time deal with aliasing. Um, camera photography, video camera, 
Uh, those are just like some of the very trivial examples where you can see aliasing, but in reality, they are much, much more. So I'm not going to go into detail on uh, explaining how aliasing occurs and why it occurs and frame rates and um, different frequencies and like the Nyquist frequency and uh, minimal maximum frequency and so on. We're just going to look at a couple examples because that's the fun part. And and I'm sure, in fact, I'm sure with the next slide, you will realize that you have actually witnessed aliasing before and, and you were previously like, what is going on? So let's look at this example. Have you, probably everybody's been in this situation where you take a photo or you take a video and you're in a striped shirt and then this shirt for some reason has these unknown patterns like on the left here. So the right image is the actual shirt um, where you, the one you're wearing, the one on the left is what you get in your photo. So there are no, none of these horizontal blue and red stripes in reality, but you get them in your photo. And so why does that happen? Well, this is an example of aliasing, which happens for photography. So there are like all aliasing comes in different types. Aliasing for video happens because the like the difference in frame rate. Um, so the, the frame rates and uh, the actual frequency of what you're uh, taking a video of. Um, then in audio, it can be this difference of the sampling rate of the audio and the different and the actual frequency of the audio. In photography, it's actually a specific type of aliasing. It's called um, locational aliasing or something like that. So because the pattern is actually has its own frequency, so these stripes on the shirt have its own frequency, right? And then the resolution of the photo. If the, the resolution of the photo is such that it cannot reproduce the pattern correctly, so the pattern is too dense, then you'll get aliasing. So it's kind of a locational aliasing rather than an aliasing in time. But nevertheless, you see a great example of aliasing here. And next one is my favorite, probably my favorite example of aliasing, this building. Look at the wall on the right. So this tower on the right is made of bricks, right? And because you're standing far away, the bricks are very small, so it means that the pattern that they create is very dense. And if you take a photo and the resolution of your camera is insufficient or the, the resolution that you're displaying this photo is insufficient, you'll get this aliasing effect. So as you can imagine, of course, this building doesn't have waves on the wall. It's just that what we're seeing is not there. So we're seeing an alias of the actual thing. And it kind of gets a bit scary, right? So there's a real building standing somewhere in real life and um, then what you see on the photo is completely different. So it's a misrepresentation of reality and kind of even if you think about it for a long time, <laughs> it uh, plays with your mind a lot. And like, so what is reality? Are we living in a matrix? Things like that, questions like that start to um, get into your head, but we are not living in a matrix, um, I hope. <laughs> and um, so what do we see here? We just see aliasing and that is a result of resolution and patterns and stuff like that. So by now you're you know pretty comfortable with Edison and then you're gonna ask the question, but Kirill, what has all of this to do with a Forex trading? Uh, <laughs> you kind of, probably if you've uh, been with Forex board for a while, you know I have this style of explaining things through a very um, kind of different approach. So we talked about something that has no relation to Forex to start with, but now let's move on to Forex trading, right? So we've got a chart here, the Euros dollar M1 chart which is uh, great. So I'm going to zoom into the very right part of the chart over here and uh, we'll have a look at that. So there's the very right part of the chart. So what is this chart? Have you ever asked yourself this question? What is this chart showing? Yes, it's showing you the price, but where is this price coming from? How How is it formed? What does this chart even mean? So let's look at some prices on this chart. All of these are actually closing prices, right? So this is just the basic close price. No. Um, open, low, high, and close. For one second, I've got this F flux kicking in, so I'm gonna take, switch it off. All right, so this is the closing price of uh, the Euro dollar on the one minute time frame. So each price represents, a, uh, or each dot here represents the closing price of a minute. Now, how did this chart come to be? It just doesn't come out of thin air, right? Where did it come from? Well, um, now let's, look at these dots by themselves, right? So there are the dots. Where did they come originally from? Well, originally they actually came from a signal. There was a signal, the Euro dollar bid price signal. And I can assure you that the bid price 
99% of the time or 99.99% of the time has way more prices in one minute than just one. So let's have a look at that. So what could have the signal actually been? The signal could have looked something like this, right? So this could have been the actual signal. And then what you can see is um, the green line is the signal that we had. And then the blue line, uh, the blue dots is actually sampling. So your basic Forex chart is a sampled chart of the actual signal. Now, bear in mind, of course, the uh, bid price of the euro dollar or any other currency is not a continuous signal like the one we were looking before. So uh, even though there's a lot of prices, there isn't an infinity number of prices within one minute. So basically, there is a limited number of prices. But still, there is much more. So um, even though this is a discrete signal, it has way more information originally than what we have. So the Forex chart is basically a so, like a sample chart or um, a chart that is uh, produced from the original chart of the bid price, which is called the tick price, a uh, tick chart, uh, through sampling, right? And so, how do we say now we have the same problem? Now we have the same question of aliasing. So, if we know these blue dots, what is the original chart? What does it look like? So, here I've drawn a random uh, guess of what the original chart could have looked like, the original signal could have looked like. But that's not exactly necessarily the correct answer. There might have been a different version. This might have been the original signal, right? So, we don't know. We don't know whether the original signal was this or that. And there's no way of telling because we are in the domain of aliasing. We have only the sampled uh, data and we have no idea what was the original data. So it could have been the blue line, could have been the purple line, could have been any other type of line. So what do we have? We have aliasing, right? So once again, we have that same problem as you saw with the live example of the brick wall. <laughs> Here we've kind of hit a brick wall as well. We don't know what the original signal was. We only have this very limited amount of information about the close prices. Okay, so we've talked about that. Hopefully that uh, all uh, makes sense. And now, what does what happens now? Well, now comes the hard part. Remember how I told you at the start that I'm going to point out the hard bits? Well, this is it. This is the hard bit. So we're going to power through it. Uh, it might, there might be a couple of uh, tricky moments, but um, like I'll try explain everything in simple terms and then we'll get back to the fun stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna have a drink of water here. All right, so let's move on to aliasing, aliasing noise, in fact. What is aliasing noise? So it is a bit, it would be a very complicated to explain the exact definition of aliasing noise. I'm just gonna uh, add a quote from the book that I mentioned previously. Aliasing noise is inter well, interference between the sampling frequency and the data frequency creates the aliasing noise. So here, you kind of already understand all of this. Let me just explain it. From what we've talked about, it, it should make a lot of uh, sense already. So data frequency is how, how quickly that uh, signal was going up and down. Was it wide or was it very narrow? Sampling frequency is how often you sample, right? So do you sample your data every um, every minute, do you sample your data every second, do you sample your data every tenth of a second. So the interference between those two uh, frequencies creates aliasing noise, all right? So let's move on to the next chart. Um, so what do we have here? Here we've got an uh, uh, example. So uh, John Ehler's white paper, which you can find at the link below. So if you're interested in all of this stuff, you want to get more information, uh, feel free to go ahead to this white paper. It's completely free, completely open, open source. There's code, there's everything. You can uh, have a look at it, download it, and read more about spectral dilation, aliasing noise, and super smoothers and stuff like that. So, but I'm just going to take the output of this study. So basically, there was a study bunch of, by John Ehlers, uh, the author of the book, and uh, he found that this is how uh, noise changes with frequency, right? So. Um, as your frequency decreases, uh, your or your sampling frequency decreases, your um, noise will increase. Uh, aliasing noise increase. Yeah, I, I don't want to make <laughs> don't want to make a mistake here explaining this uh, chart here. I'm just going to move to the conclusion from this chart. This chart is just basically to uh, show that. Um, uh, that this, there was a study and that uh, that uh, John Ehlers has uh, shown that there's actually 
uh, aliasing noise in data. And the reason, the main part that we want to look at, <laughs> the main part that we want to look at, at uh, over here at the bottom, you can see is that aliasing noise swamps the signal where the cycle period is less than 10 bars. So we're actually going to go to that conclusion right away without going into too much detail on aliasing here. And we're going to just uh, have this conclusion. It is a good rule of thumb that aliasing noise intercepts the signal amplitude at about 10 bar cycle period, regardless of the time frame you are trading. So basically, if you ever go to um, look at 10 bar cycle periods or less, uh, then you will have too much aliasing noise and therefore you are not going to be analyzing the signal, the real signal. You're going to be mostly dealing with aliasing noise. So what does that mean? I know this might be a bit of um, a bit complicated, right? So this this transition from aliasing to aliasing noise and to bar cycle periods and all that stuff. Let's just get the final result from this. And those who are interested in uh, this white paper can go ahead and read it. Otherwise, we're just going to have the final output. So what does this mean? All of this. What does all of this mean to us? All of this means that we need to use filters. So here we've got an example of an air filter. Of course, we're not going to be using air filters, but we're going to um, be using filters about uh, for forex. So I'm not saying we need to, as in you know, whenever you're trading, you need to. But it is advisable, or it is beneficial. There, there are benefits of using filters because filters can help you take that aliasing noise out, right? So that is what. Uh, not all filters are for. Some filters have other reasons, other um, uh, things that they're for, like spectral dilation. They can take that out, uh, but or you know mitigate the effect of spectral dilation. But here, in, we, in this specific case, we're talking about uh, filters that remove that aliasing noise that we talked about. And think of aliasing noise. This is the key. Think of aliasing noise, regardless of, um, you know, we've seen a photo, uh, you've kind of understood what aliasing is. Aliasing noise is still a bit unclear. So think of aliasing noise as the uncertainty you have in your signal, right? So that as that uncertainty, because you're sampling your signal, it gives you an uncertainty around, around the original signal, right? So think of your aliasing noise as that. If we were in sound, if we were in like processing sound signals right now, I could switch on. Um, a sound. In fact, you can go to Wikipedia and uh, look up anti-aliasing, and you'll find a, a good audio that shows you exactly what aliasing noise, uh, what noise, uh, what the signal sounds like, and then what sample signal with aliasing noise sounds like. So basically, it adds that a certain level of noise to your to your chart, which is associated with that uncertainty. That's that's pretty much all you need uh, need to take away from this. That you know now what aliasing is. You know that aliasing noise is associated with uncertainty. And now we're going to talk about how do we remove this aliasing noise or how do we mitigate the effect of aliasing noise. And that's where we're talking about filters. All right, hard part over. Hope that all uh, made sense. So I'm just going to jump back to um, the. Uh, presentation or the, <laughs> the webinar now just to make sure everybody's still here and um, how do I do this all right so let me know if you are still in the room how do I put my um, uh, actually I don't I don't really need to I guess okay um, so let me know if you're still in the room if you can uh, still uh, see this webinar and I'm slowly going to bring up our uh, charts over here. Okay, okay. So did that all of that make sense, guys? Like, was that? I know I understand that was a bit complicated, but just let me know. Did you guys uh, understand what aliasing is, and do you have a kind of a bit better grasp what we're talking about here, and uh, what what's what we're going to be looking at now, and like why why we need the super smoothers and stuff like that? Okay, yeah, I can see that. Everybody is still here. Everybody is still awake. That's that's a great start. Okay, good. So I've got a lot of yeses. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> somebody's on their phone. Okay. Uh, it's not difficult at all. That's awesome. That's Thanks, Nicholas, for the support. Okay, so some people are already familiar with that stuff. Great. So now we're going to move on to... Forex, right? We're going to look at some uh, some things here. So, 
we're going to start off. I wanted to show you, um, the first thing I wanted to show you was, I'm going to take some moving averages, right? I'm going to take a moving average and I'm going to take a moving average, let's say of with a period of 10, right? So let's zoom in a bit and let's zoom in a bit more. Okay. So there's a moving average of a period of 10 and maybe let's make it thicker so we can see it better. Now, the other one I'm going to show you is I'm going to put a moving average here. These are all simple moving averages. We're not going to go into all that exponential and other stuff. I'm going to put a one with a period of 50, all right? So what can we see here, right? We can see the two things I want to draw your attention to is are that, first of all, the moving average with a period of, um, which one is this, 10, has or the moving average for a period of 50 the blue line has better smoothing than the red line right so there's there's no question about that you can already see right away that there's this like this this up and down movement over here it's it's present in the red chart you can see it over there it's not present in the blue chart in the blue line right that's because the blue line smooths out this dip right so that's basically the concept of smoothing the higher you go in the period of the moving average the better you get the smoothing right makes perfect sense the second thing that i wanted to point out is that the higher period have have more lag so i'm going to actually change this to a period of 100 oh okay uh, probably not the not the best example let's try 300 so here is an example of a 300 versus a 10 so once again if you if we zoom out you can see that the 10 the 300 has way better smoothing than the 10 right but now if we go in closer you'll see that the on the other hand the red one the shorter period of the moving average has much lesser lag so the shorter period of the moving average is already going down like you can see that the chart is going down so the shorter uh, period of the uh, shorter moving average the red one's already going down whereas the blue one is still going up so the blue one has a lot of lag inherently built into it so it'll take a lot of time a lot of extra bars or extra closing prices on the way down for the blue line to kind of pick up and realize oh actually the price is going down i should turn around and so those are the two um criterias or criterions uh we're going to to those are the two criteria that we <laughs> that we're going to be uh, judging moving or any kind of smoothers for that matter uh why so we're going to be talking about their smoothing cap capability and they're, we're going to be talking about or observing their lag right so it's a trade-off any kind of smoothing is always going to be a trade-off between the actual quality of the smoothing and the lag if you want better smoothing you're going to have more lag if you want um if you want less lag you're going to have worse smoothing and uh, you got you got to pick that's why we pick the periods of uh that's why we've got to pick the periods of the moving averages and now so here you can play around with uh, the simple moving average or in your terminal you've got access to exponential moving average and so on now i'm going to introduce the uh, super smoother right so i'm going to first of all uh, bring up a, a website which is our favorite website for Xboat. And you can actually, so this is your bonus for this presentation. You can get the super smoother here. So if you go to www.forexbot.com slash super smoother, one word, and you read through this disclaimer, make sure you agree to this disclaimer, and then you can download this file over here, which is the super smoother. So don't bother doing us this right now because you can do this after the presentation as well. Right now, we're just going to talk through the super smoother. So just um, let's go and jump straight into that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a super smoother to this chart, right? So let's find it here. Let's say, where did I put it? Super smoother version 1.1. So this is, uh, the indicator that is presented by John Ehlers in his free white paper. So the code comes from there. This is my interpretation of uh, the code uh, or my implementation of the code. And so here we've got a moving average of 10. Let's try put a super smoother of 10. I just want to show you what happens there. So let's say uh, it's a bit uh, not right. So let's say deep pink for the super smoother. So here you'll see that they're different, right? Um, and that is because 
um, you got to change the actual period for the super smoother. Um, let's actually change the period. Super smoother period has to be double of what you set for the moving average, right? It's just the way they're constructed. This is about the code. So if you want a 10 period, uh, 10 bar moving average, then the super smoother is actually going to be. Um, so I'm going to make this a bit different, okay? So if you want a 10 period moving average, super smoother is going to be a, a 20. That's just how the super smoother code is constructed. So I'm going to remove this for now. Um, what you can see here is number one, is you can see that the super smoother has better smoothing already. So these are identical. They should be identical. Like right? theoretically, a 20 period super smoother and a 10 period moving average should be identical. But you can already see that, for example, here, you can see that the moving average is more susceptible to different changes in price, right? So uh, here you've got some changes. Here is a good example. So the super smoother goes nice and smooth. Moving average is all like fuzzy and doesn't know what's going on here as well. So you could see this this uh, uh, the price went uh, the moving average went up a bit, whereas the smoother um, super smoother barely budged. So the moving average went up. Super smoother didn't react to that uh, change in price here again. Super smoother price uh, moving average. All right, so you kind of get the point. So let's uh, try changing the periods of these and have a look at what else we have, right? So let's say we want, um, let's not double, let's quadruple. So moving average becomes 40, super smoother becomes 80. All right, so here the effect is even more noticeable. So here you can see super smoother, nice and smooth, the blue line. Red line is like all over the place, up, down, up, down, up. Right, so and all of this also um, kind of uncertainty, or well, it looks like uncertainty, but just uh, unsmoothness in uh, the actual line. Here, you can actually see that the moving average was a very uh, moving very sporadically, whereas the super smoother was nice and smooth, right, all the way through. Um, what does that what does it tell us, right? So let's zoom out a bit. So what you can see here is that this is a good example over here. So you can see that the price is going up, down, up, down, up, right? So what is a super smoother doing? Super smoother is going down. There is lag. So bear in mind, so this up corresponds to this up. This down corresponds to this down. This up corresponds to this up. This down to this down. But basically, the super smoother is doing the same thing as the price, but of course, with a lag. We talked about the fact that if you want smoothing, you'll get lag. So here, the uh, the price has an up, an up, and uh, well, let's not worry about it. So two two ups over here, two downs here. So the super smooth down, up, down, up, right? The moving average has this hump, which comes from nowhere. And then it has a down, it has an up, a down, and then an up, and then like you don't know what's going on. So the super smoother is actually a better representation of the actual signal that we see on the chart. And you're gonna find heaps of examples of uh, all of this going on here. So the question is why? Why is that going on? Why is this, the moving average showing us something different and all of this like sporadic little movements in uh, the price that the super smoother is on? Well, the reason for that is because the super smoother has better attenuation on um, aliasing noise. Right, so super smoother is designed by John Ehlers in a way to reduce aliasing noise. In fact, the super smoother, if I'm not mistaken, it's a modified two pole Butterworth filter that John took from, um, di he digitized it, right? So he took it from um, just signal processing to actual digital processing. So the, what, we're, what we're working with here. Uh, without going into all that detail, Super smoother is designed to take out aliasing noise. So all of this uh, chaotic movement, like it's not a guarantee that all of it is aliasing noise, but a lot of it, a big chunk of it is actually aliasing noise that is interfering with your moving average, right? So that is one advantage of the super smoother. It has better smoothing, right? And also the other thing is, which you can kind of see over here, it's it's uh, it's a bit harder to illustrate, but for instance here, you can see that the super smoother had its low over here. The moving average was like uncertain, where's the low, is it here or here, right? And we remember that this low corresponds to this part of the chart, right? So the super smoother has less lag, that's um, the other thing. Well, let's kind of like go to a different time frame and. I, I'm not guaranteeing that we will actually see this in action,
but we might. All right, so let's have a look. What can we see? Boom, boom, boom. All right, so I guess I guess it's not it's not that easy to uh, find. You kind of can see a little bit that the smooth super smoother signal comes a bit earlier. It's more. I would speculate that it's more. Uh, well, that that just happens because there's no more dot on the chart. Don't worry about that. Um, so I would speculate that it's a bit easier to see like in real life. So when you're actually um, something is going on. So like say if we look here, you can see that the super smoother is already going down, right? It's already following, starting to follow the price and it's downward moving. The moving average is kind of like, uh, oh, okay, now we're going down. I see that. So the super smoother had its like peak over here and then it started going down. The moving average for these, what is this, 16, 20 bars, an extra 20 bars, you can see that the super smoother already had its peak. The moving average, an extra 20 bars, it's like, uh, oh, 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 okay, now we're turning around. Oh, okay. <laughs> that must have sounded pretty, uh, pretty comic-like. Anyway, so uh, just, just one of the examples of where the super smoother has less lag, and that's the way it's developed. So what, what does this bring us to? Well, this brings us to the notion, how is this possible? How can a super smoother have both better smoothing and lower lag. How is that possible? Isn't it a trade-off? Well, it is a trade-off, but the moving average is one of those indicators, right? It's so simple. Um, and even the exponential moving average and so on, the weighted moving average, they were all developed back in like the 70s or somewhere around there. The moving average probably was developed back in 17th century. But nevertheless, the super smoother employs much more sophisticated mathematical concepts, excuse me, that allow you to achieve that better efficiency, that higher level of efficiency where the trade-off between lag and uh, smoothing is still there, but it's not as drastic. You're not paying that much of a sacrifice. And uh, because a lot of that um, trade-off comes, a good chunk of it comes from the aliasing noise. If you remove that aliasing noise, then you have less to worry about. And in fact, um, I, I, I didn't really, I wasn't going to do this, but let's have a look at that uh, quickly at that white paper um, without like going into detail. Like here, this is a great chart that shows you uh, how the super smoother and uh, moving average remove noise, right? So he's here he's compa comparing an exponential moving average super smooth. So here you can uh, see um, how much uh, amplitude of the signal in decibels is removed based on the, the frequency, right? So here your frequency is increasing to, uh, from left to right. And you can see that the super smoother at, ver at higher frequencies, right? So that's where the aliasing noise actually sits, is removing noise much better. So here your attenuation is quite like poor for even the exponential moving average, super smoother, bam, cut off, right? After a certain point, there's no more noise at all. So as you can see, just the way this indicator is constructed, here's the code, by the way, it's like, I say complex mathematical things, but that, that's all, of, all there is to it. That's all the code. This code allows you to achieve that greater efficiency. All right, so concluding this presentation, there's some interesting stuff here as well, but that's more about spectral dilation and so on. Uh, by the way, his book is great. If you're into mathematical stuff and, and can understand formulas, uh, it's a great book to look into. Anyway, concluding this presentation, um, why use something that is old? Why um, you know, travel around in a chariot or in in a on a horse in a what's it called um, in a cart pulled by a horse on wooden wheels when you can get into a car or into a Tesla car, right? Into a brand new car, like st same effect you get from A to B, but you get there faster and safer, right? Same thing here. Uh, you've got you can you've got a signal. You need to overlay a smoother because we want to get rid of that aliasing noise. Why would you use a moving average when it has higher lag and worse smoothing when, uh, as opposed to a super smoother which has less lag and better smoothing? So that is uh, kind of the conclusion here that you have much better tools available to your disposal because of that evolved mathematical apparatus over the past you know, 30, 40 years that has been applied to trading. Use it. Uh, or you know, <laughs> it might be beneficial to use it. I'm not, not 
saying that you have to use it, but consider having a look at it. And the other thing I wanted to mention is even in his white paper, and especially in his book, John Ellers sometimes even says that he will often not even look at the price um, chart, right? So if like he says he has an indicator or a, an expert advisor or something that he's using, he won't even use this price to put into the um, indicator or into that um, uh, expert advisor or into his trading system. Uh, what he does is he actually looks at, let me open this up. He actually looks just at the uh, super smoother. And here you can see that blah, blah, blah. Best use with attenuation period of 10. So what he does is sometimes he just takes the super, this is by, by the way, this is a uh, code I wrote. Um, so what he takes is he takes a super smoother, gives it a period of 10, and he replaces the chart information with that so he just like i'm not even gonna look at the chart i'm just gonna look at the super smoother with the period of 10 because if you uh, by the way if you set anything less than 10 then you will have too much aliasing noise it won't be able to take it out so um to remove aliasing noise the starting period of the super smoother that you should ever consider is a period of 10 so that is that correlates to a period of moving average of five so if you if you have been using a moving average of a period of less than five regardless of what chart you're in um so we're kind of like we're on the m1 chart even if you're on the daily chart, um, let's get rid of this. Even if you're on the daily chart, same thing applies. If you use a period, a moving average of period less than five, you kind of you have too much aliasing noise, and uh, you can get swamped with it. You probably will, and your signal has no sense. So the starting point is a super smoother of period of ten or moving average of period of five, and that removes most of the aliasing noise. So John. Once again, I'm not advocating that you have to do this all the time, but just consider that this, uh, sometimes John actually says that he doesn't even consider the actual chart itself, just looks at the super smoother of period 10 by default, because it's just that much better, right? It just takes out that aliasing noise. Um, something similar to um, audio processing. Why would you ever listen to watch a movie or something that has noise in it or listen to audio, right? That has noise in it. You would by default go to, you know, a filtered version which doesn't have that noise in it all right so i think that's everything i wanted to talk about today let me just quickly check and um, then we'll move on to the q a i guess all right so aliasing noise check super smoother indicator check two reasons why super smoother and moving average i'm actually just looking at the thing here uh, so aliasing noise yes super smoother yes two reasons yes Extra bonus, yes, that was the indicator, and Q&A, ask me anything. So that's the last part we've got left. I hope I uh, delivered on this promise that we'll have heaps of fun <laughs> and bring a friend. All right, so we're moving on to the Q&A. Let me uh, bring up my, um, uh, stop my presentation. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, where do I put this now? Okay. So how was that, guys? I, I can see some questions already popping in, so let me have a read through those. Uh, indicator is at forexboat.com slash super smoother, answering your question. All right, um, Renee, question. Have you looked out the video chand or the AMA adapting moving? Um, I haven't, I've heard of the video because I think it's available in uh, the MedTrader 5 platform. I have, I think I might have done uh, some like basic work. I'm not going to, I've heard of the AMA, might have done some work with it. Uh, but um, yeah, like, uh, you know, each to his own. So I haven't compared them to the Super Smoother. Uh, I kind of like the concepts behind Super Smoother. So I'm just going to stick with that. The question is the slope of the super smoother the thing to look for is a price costing or multiple super smooth way to go. What do you recommend? Thanks. Aha. Uh -huh. And <laughs> Brian's going to um, uh, be happy about this. I can't answer that question, Renee. That would be personal advice. I cannot provide personal advice or any investment advice. Unfortunately, I can only give you general advice and um yeah so it's totally up to you everybody is different you would have to research these things on on your own and uh, find out what trading strategy you like to stick to would you like to look at the crossing or the slope and other things 
I give you the tools and then you decide what to do with them. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I can say on this uh, question. I'm sure you will um, have uh, lots of fun at figuring it out. It's, that's, that's what it's trading's about, right? Trying to figure out the correct, what works for you basically. All right, so where's the indicator? I cannot even, da, 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 da. Okay, Paul, I uh, just uh, send uh, support and email and we'll figure it out. You should be able to download the indicator from the website. Um, Vladislav going to test out, great. Oh, VG is in MT4 as well, okay. Um, Rod, great, very interesting. If Super Smooth provides the trade direction, what is the entry trigger? Enter of uh, the length. Uh, once again, Rod, uh, apologies, but I can't provide you for trading strategy here. Uh, this is more for educational purposes, so you would have to research that on your own. Once again, like, you know, for one chart it might be 11th period, 11th bar. For another chart, it might be 15th bar. For for certain market conditions, it can be up, can be down, can be a crossing, can be a lag, can be. There's lots of different options, so uh, you would need to explore that as well. Uh, very interesting. Some of uh, slides are dis. Toted, unreadable, please repeat exact download address. Hmm. Okay, so the address, I don't think you can download the slides, but you can get the super smoother, sportboat.com super smoother. So that's where you can get the indicator. Okay, all right, guys, any more questions? I'm just gonna scroll down, see if there was any questions while I was um, presenting. Uh, uh, Kirill, Kirill, could you please place, place your webinar number one in the YouTube channel? Unfortunately, webinar number one is on my personal YouTube channel. Uh, I, might, I might try to do that at some point, but um, you should have gotten a link if you registered for it. If you haven't, send an email to support and we will sort you out with that link. Um, ba -ba -bum, ba -bum. So mostly questions about the recording. Whoa. What is that? Um, um okay cool um yeah that's pretty much it um no the, uh, that we were using mt4 so hope you guys enjoyed that um oh wait hold on hold on we've got polls oh my god i completely forgot about the polls um all right let's quickly do this uh ba -ba -ba -bum. um all right so we're going to say load all right uh, all right, so here the question is, have you considered aliasing noise in Forex before? So before this webinar, have you, were you ever like, uh, I'm going to, you know, think about aliasing noise in Forex? So I'm just curious how many of you have done that. So, and um, be, be honest, like not, not a problem. Like we go, that's what this webinar is for, to change your a view on this to you know let you know about something new that you haven't considered and you will consider okay so we've got what have we got we've got um yes about 10 percent, no 90 percent. okay so that's good that's um uh that's a um good result so i, I don't have a question for will you consider aliasing noise but i'm sure that uh you probably, probably answered a yes to that question um Okay, so we've done that one. Uh, actually, let's let's let me. I've never done this before. Will you consider aliasing noise going forward? So let's check that one out. So yes, no. All right, let's um, let's try this one. Will you consider aliasing noise going forward in your trading? And I'm not saying like necessarily take it out or use the super smooth all the time but just like will you be uh, aware of it and whenever you look at a chart you will never look at it the same all right so 90 percent yes seven percent no great result i'm i'm glad that i was able to uh, show you something else about trading that might be worth considering okay so i'm going to end the poll now thank you for your answers 95 percent and uh, what else did i have um da -da 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 -da. oh finally uh, how would you rate this webinar on a scale from one to five with one being lowest, five being the highest? I always ask this question because I'm curious on how I go and I want to know your feedback. All right, so, okay. So far we've got a five, we've got a four. K 
can I get three? Can I get three? I'm joking. No threes. <laughs> um, once again, just uh, whatever you feel that uh, this webinar was. Okay, so yeah, uh, it's interesting. Some people really didn't like this webinar. That's totally fine as well. I understand it was uh, quite technical. Not for not for everybody. That's why we have a different mix of webinars, like some technical, some bit simpler, some uh, about other things. Okay, so uh, somewhere between four or five. Happy with that. Thank you very much for your answers. And this brings us to the end of today's two Tutorial, uh, <laughs> Rod. I'm going to start dating a super spinner. <laughs> nice one. Um, all right, brings brings us to the end of the tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna actually run this video one more time. I like it that much. All right. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Take care.